So hello, Jack. Uh, thank you for coming on the channel. So we both are EQC shareholders, and I wanted to have Jack on the channel to give his perspective about the merger and let us know what he thinks about it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Karan. Yeah. Uh, so Jack is a real estate attorney recently. Officially. Uh, received, yeah, officially. <laughs> yeah, just swore in about uh, last week. So it's been, it's been, a good, been a good month. I'll be starting officially full-time uh, in, in a couple of weeks for a firm in Chicago doing commercial real estate law. So looking forward to that. Nice. So what do you think about the merger? I mean, in terms of um, equity common wealth, we know that it was a cash shell and they've decided to go and merge with Monmouth Real Estate. So uh, they're going the industrial space. What are your thoughts about that? Well, it was definitely unexpected uh, coming from a guy like Sam Zell, who's made his reputation on finding distressed real estate, stuff that has some sort of turnaround narrative, perhaps, where he can add value, create something that way. That's kind of his whole career. It's been that, that sort of motive. Um, but this, this Monmouth real estate portfolio is, uh, it's pristine. <laughs> There's like no issue with it. It's super high uh, occupancy, all rent collections coming in. It's like almost hundred percent recollection. So no problems. It's industrial, which has some tailwinds. Definitely has been on a huge run up already. Uh, so it's very uncharacteristic. Um, the portfolio itself, I mean, it's great, but you're paying a premium to get it because it's, it's, it's industrial, which is one of the few spaces in commercial real estate across the world, really, that was completely unfazed and, if anything, was driven forward by, by the pandemic and increasing need for logistics, e-commerce, all that stuff. So uh, very uncharacteristic. That's probably the best way to put it. Um, and definitely not what I think most people were expecting. But I think, yeah, that's why the stock pretty much dropped 6% the day the news was announced on May 4th. Yeah. yeah, huge drop. I hadn't seen a drop like that with EQC for a while, I think since March. March yeah, you, you wouldn't really you wouldn't really expect it outside of like a dividend being paid yeah. out um, because it was just all it's all cash. You know, there's not there's not going to be a bunch of or there shouldn't be a lot of volatility there that you'd expect. Uh, but yeah, clearly shareholders were not keen on, on the deal for whatever reason, uh, or maybe they just wanted the cash. That also seemed to be a, a, a yeah. narrative that had kind of played out. Like, hey, if you're not going to invest the cash, can we just have it uh, and, and go put it somewhere else? I suppose, but. Um, yeah, that it was it was a that was a pretty substantial drop given given the news. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of the combined entity, uh, we have the eight K up here. So the total market capitalization of the combined entity is going to be six point five billion, and they'll also have two point five billion in cash to fund potential acquisitions. So, do you see these acquisitions also being more so in the same sort of industrial space as in um, the same sort of tenants that um, Monmouth has currently gone for or do you see more sort of riskier tenants or different sort of real estate properties? Well, at least what we've heard is that they're trying to, they want to diversify this portfolio a bit. The one big flaw, if there is one with this Monmouth portfolio, is that half of the rent comes from one tenant and that's FedEx. It's across multiple locations, but still it's a lot of tenant risk. So they want to diversify away from that. And the question is, are they going to be adding other smaller, riskier tenants or even other big tenants? Um, or are they just going to sell off certain FedEx assets to, to lower the diversity there and um, also get some cash on the table? It's hard to say exactly. Um, but like you said, they have, they're maintaining their cash pile. So it's not like there's a pressing need for cash. Uh, but Sam Zell's history has been that he likes to sell when the going is good. And, and he's very, been very consistent with that. So if he gets a good good offer for some of these properties, even if he just bought them, if he can make a quick profit right there and turn it into cash so that he can then find a distressed deal later, I could definitely see him doing that. Um, as for what they actually add to it, they're trying to, they said at least they're trying to create an industrial focused business, a, a top level, amazing industrial real estate investment trust that that's the goal so i'd imagine they'd stay in the industrial space but it first off they have to finish the merger and then second off uh, we got to see what they do with the existing portfolio um but it seems like they're going to be trying to stay in that industrial space sam zell has a spac as well that he recently started or i guess it's been about a year now uh where he's trying to find a uh, industrial distribution or not industrial and dis uh, distribution uh, tech company. So he's clearly looking at that space. And I think that might, might've been a reason why 
uh, he decided to pull the trigger on this, even with prices where they're at. I think logistics is uh, where Samsung's focus has been for the past, I think, one year or so. So it's yeah. no surprise that he's in industry. But like as an equity commonwealth shareholder, is there any other sector within the real estate sector like you would have preferred that this company pivoted towards, not just industry? I don't know if I would have preferred a, a pivot in any one way. I w- I'm not surprised that they pivoted to something besides office, which is what they had, um, since Zell has been pretty indiscriminate towards like uh, specific sectors. He, he's done pretty much everything. Like in, in the last decade, he's done a lot of mobile home deals. So that, that's a totally different ball game. Well, I, I suppose real estate is inherently similar across sectors, but it's, it's a different management structure to different, uh, uh, different tenant base. Uh, so it's different risk factors in that way, but the, the ball game is pretty same. It uh, pretty much the same. It's you're buying space and renting it out. Just what kind of space? Um, so I'm not surprised that he made a pivot in general. Um, I knew he was going to be avoiding retail. He's been pretty negative on retail uh, right now. He calls it a falling knife and he's continued to call it a falling knife. So he clearly doesn't think the bottom has been hit yet if, if it's going to hit it sometime soon. Um, and I probably, I just probably was expecting him to wait for a dip in the office market, uh, but he's been complaining about an oversupply there too. So I'm, I can't say I'm surprised that he didn't do office, uh, but that just seemed like the natural path sticking with office, which has been, a large part of his success over many decades now has been the office market, but must be time to move on. I honestly thought he was going to somehow the other incorporate equity residential and the cash from equity Commonwealth to kind of create yeah. a bigger company. I thought that was what was going to happen. Yeah. Cause yeah. Uh, cause equity residential doesn't have nearly the, the cash ratio yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that Commonwealth has, which I did think was weird too. When I was initially looking into the company, it's like, you have both REITs here, or he has multiple REITs. So, and one of them has all the cash. Would it make sense to diffuse the cash into the other ones? I don't know. Um, maybe he'd rather have some like diversification there. I, I, I have no idea why, why they wouldn't do that. Or if there's some sort of weird stock plan structure that, that would prohibit that or make it not make sense. I'm not too sure. So you've gone through Monmouth's uh, real estate portfolio, right? I mean, 50% of it is FedEx. So right. do you think it's more likely that uh, they would start selling off the FedEx section or would they start selling off a portion of the other industrial properties that they are? I don't know if it would necessarily be FedEx, but I do think if they're going to sell anything, it'll be ones that have recently leased um, because the way generally a commercial real estate lease works is the rent is locked in for say five to 10 years. And then there's usually options after that for uh, maybe five year terms after for some amount of time with fixed rent increases in there. Uh, so if we're talking about inflation risk, which Zell is keen to, um, you might want to sell off those assets that were just rented with higher grade tenants. So lower risk for a new buyer if, if they're just trying to get payments in, obviously. obviously. Um, and those would probably command the best premium right now, uh, just because there's not a lot of vacancy risk. But on the flip side, you have some pricing risk since the rent will be fixed for some amount of time, most likely. I don't know what these leases look like exactly. I'm kind of speculating, but that's generally how it works. So uh, whether that's FedEx, whether they have some Amazon properties as well, stuff like that, that was recently rented, I think will be the first to go if anything goes. I see a lot of trend towards more consolidation within the industrial real estate space. Uh, We clearly have seen pro lodges going and acquiring Liberty Trust. Was it Liberty? Uh, I'm not sure which one it was, but yeah. Yeah, Prologis has been acquiring companies left and right. Right. So I, I see that entire sector facing a lot more consolidation. So in terms of equity commonwealth, they have 2.5 billion in cash. Um, do you think if they do decide to sell off properties, would that hurt future acquisitions? As in people you mean see like that. Sorry, yeah. You mean like would, would it dissuade people because Zell's yeah. selling off their stuff as soon as he gets exactly. it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I've always thought actually on the flip side, uh, for example, he's, he's known as the, the grave dancer, right? Has this reputation of buying distressed assets and then uh, selling off the more premier ones that are stabilized. 
So on the flip side, if you're buying a stabilized property from Sam Zell, you're probably either overpaying or you're not seeing something that he is, which would have you worried given his track record. <laughs> so I've always thought that, but it hasn't seemed to affect much since he was able to sell off hundreds of office properties from Equity uh, Commonwealth and sold off uh, Equity Office right before the crash in 08, which is where he really made a huge killing uh, by selling the BlackRock. But uh, being on the other side of a Sam Zell deal is what I'd be more worried about. If I'm being acquired by Sam Zell, uh, I, I wouldn't be too pessimistic. Even if he's selling off assets, you know he's probably going to get a good price. He's going to try to. So it's not like it's a fire sale. Um, so I don't think it'll affect things for on a, from an acquisition perspective, maybe from a disposition perspective in that people will be like, hey, why, why are you selling this? We don't want to get burned here on, on the back end because you're seeing something we're not. That would be what my initial thinking. Um, but it's definitely a good question. Um, so you mentioned inflation earlier. So you mentioned the merger was happening due to the cost. So maybe some other thing there might be more inflation ahead. Uh, do you see them taking on more debt to fund acquisitions? Do you see that as a possibility? Or any targets that you see within the industrial real estate space that they could be going after? Thanks. That, that would be a natural incl inclination because during inflation, you get a lot of debt destruction um, via the inflation, as long as your rate is fixed, of course, which... Uh, you're not going to find a 30-year fixed rate loan in commercial. It might be fixed for five years or something like that. So it's not as big of a lock, but it'll still be very helpful if he's that concerned about inflation. Um, perhaps that could be an alternative to actually selling some of these properties is you re do a refinance out of them, pull out the cash, and then invest it elsewhere. But I don't think he's, we're not in a target rich environment. So if he takes on this debt, adds a bunch of interest costs, but then can't place the money anywhere that's attractive to him, then it's not really a great deal. What I could see him doing potentially, uh, granted it's a different environment than what we had back in the 1970s, which is where he actually uh, went into a lot of distress deals uh, when, when we started having some trouble in the real estate market uh, and would, uh, would take on the debt and would, re and would do a refinance on that debt uh, because he had a bunch of cash ready to go and banks didn't want to foreclose on the properties. They didn't want to manage it. They decided, okay, we'll give you a rate cut or something like that or favorable terms uh, while you stabilize this property again, because you have all this cash. I could see him doing that again, if that were to happen, but with the, with the way the market is manipulated so heavily, especially the debt market by the federal reserve it owns half of all commercial real estate, uh, commercial backed mortgages. Um, yeah. Uh, or sorry, commercial mortgage-backed securities, excuse me, CMBS. Um, it's, it's a very different market than what we had in the 70s. So I, I don't see him bringing, on out, bringing out a ton of debt given the cash pile. Maybe if they had no cash, it would make sense. Uh, but he always seems to favor just that the purest form of liquidity, which is holding a bunch of cash. And uh, it, he's not super concerned about bringing on a ton of debt to the table, unless of course you can get amazing terms that could fix that rate for a while. But it, 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 I, can't, I can't really say either way, it's a hard call because um, uh, there is a good, they are adopting a good amount of debt from this portfolio in the acquisition. So it's not as though it's completely debt-free. You know, there was something that he mentioned during the earnings call that you had covered. Um, he said like the combined entry will have a cash pile of 5.5 billion. I don't know if you caught that. Did he say cash balance or I thought that was just the value that they were saying, think, not cash balance. No, I think he said cash balance. So I, think, I, I, don't, I don't think that would add up. Um, yeah, it's 6.5 billion is the total value, the total market capitalization of the combined entity. And then minus about a billion in debt. Um, yeah. Because so, what? Equity Commonwealth has about 3 billion. I forget what Monmouth has exactly, but it, it's a couple hundred million. I don't think it's that much. Maybe it's a billion. Yeah, um, 941 million in debt plus yeah. 515. So that, so, that would, so that would be about $4 billion in cash. So I don't know where they're getting the 6.5 unless that was referring to the full deal value. Maybe he said cash on accident. Yeah, um, that's what, I mean, I don't know if it was a slip of the tongue or if it was actually. <laughs> <laughs> unless he's envisioning these properties as yeah. cash because he's going to sell them off a Freudian yeah. slip of sorts. <laughs> yeah, because with Equity Commonwealth, when they got in the deal, I know that they went to the entire portfolio and saw that there were like under 10 properties that actually seemed like they were worth owning. So do you and see- And that's what they ended up with. Yeah, exactly. Do you see a probability that that might happen? That they sell off all 120 properties? Or is that very unlikely? The, the di I think it's, well, it's definitely less likely than what happened with the office portfolio with Equity Commonwealth uh, because 
I don't think Zell thinks that industrial is oversupplied, at least at the moment. He recognizes that, um, I forget the exact quote, but he said something like, it's crowded, but not too crowded. Uh, so uh, he know, he recognizes that it's a it's a hot sector. Everyone knows that. that that's that's where a lot of money's going right now. A lot of new new developments there, but there's so much demand there as well. So it kind of cancels out. Uh, I think he's going to be paying very close attention to that. And if if it falls into that imbalance again, where he thinks there's an oversupply after writing it out for five ten years, then I, I don't be surprised when he starts pulling the trigger, selling some of these deals. If if that becomes the case, do you think he could pull off the same sort of 2007? Um, what was that equity prop, equity, equity office equity office was that yeah do you think he could pull something like that off where you know he starts merging companies and then eventually just sells it off like in 2025 or 2026 do you see that as a likely scenario uh, only if there's a big run up uh, after this which there could be but it, that's that's kind of more of a almost more of a macro issue yeah. uh where the, where the entire real estate market will be at that point, because that was a massive portfolio equity office. Um, and he built it up over a long time. And so uh, if he continues to build this industrial portfolio over the next decade, and by then the euphoria has run out or, or there's some issue on the horizon, then sure, you can find a buyer. The reason he sold equity office wasn't so much he was trying to time the market. He said, or at least that's what he says, he said that uh, it was he got an offer he couldn't refuse, and BlackRock gave him a ton of money for this nice portfolio that ended up losing a bunch of value <laughs> in the crash. <laughs> so, um, if he gets a great offer for a um, highly coveted industrial portfolio five to ten years from now, then sure, or even a couple of years from now, I don't know how quick he'd be to sell. But he's mm-hmm. shown us that he's he's definitely willing to sell when, when when he gets an offer that makes sense. Because we're seeing a lot of um, even abandoned like malls and large spaces being converted into fulfillment centers. So, yeah, like including in this portfolio. Uh, yeah. One of the flagship ones is the, uh, I forget the name of the mall, but this huge mall in Texas uh, was converted into a, a FedEx facility, which is now in the Monmouth portfolio and soon to right. be in the equity portfolio, which is kind of, it's pretty neat. And it's kind of wild just seeing the changes that can happen over, over many decades. Yeah. I actually see equity Commonwealth merging probably with a spinoff of another real estate, like another sector of a real estate company. So maybe they'll carve out like a portion and then merge that. And then, I don't know, that's what I think will happen. Like company. acquiring other, in, like the industrial section of a particular portfolio. Yep. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I see that as a very likely scenario. But yeah. Only, um, only because there aren't many portfolios like Monmouth, at least that are of that size. It's one of the better at least from my limited research on the sector, um, it's one of the better industrial portfolios out there, at least from a size perspective and quality of tenant. It's almost all A plus tenants um, with, with comparatively low risk com- compared to uh, some smaller tenants um, or, or less nationally recognized, less yeah. credit worthy tenants. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the deal, I mean, are you, you are a shareholder, right? But- uh, right. Are you looking to add more or are you just like comfortable with the position in your portfolio? I added a little bit more on the dip just because it got down to where the cash value itself was enough for me to say, okay, I'll, I'll come back in. Even if this deal falls through, you still got all that cash sitting there. Um, so, I, so I added a little bit. I'm not turned off by this deal, partly because they're maintaining all that cash. So they could, yeah, they are diluting shares, of course. So it's not as though they're not losing anything. Um, but that that like margin of safety, it wasn't humongous, came back in my view. So I added a little bit, not too much. Uh, and I also want to see what happens as they go through due diligence and everything. And since they're they're not at the actual merger yet, that could take quite quite some time to actually close. Once it closes and we get some more clarity on what Zell's going to do with the portfolio, that would probably be another time to add or sell in my view. But uh, a lot could happen before then. They could announce another deal for all I know. <laughs> that would be unlikely, exactly. but who knows? Yeah. Is there any sort of scenario where you would say, okay, I'm out of equity commonwealth. I'm, I'm just going to sell out of holding. I'd definitely be concerned if Sam Zell passed or stepped down. <laughs> that would have me worried, <laughs> but uh, yeah. he just hasn't shown any signs of slowing down. Um, certainly if, uh, if they, if they get a little too cute with their debt situation, I, I might be worried about that. Mm-hmm. And that's more of a personal choice for me in that 
I'm going to be pretty highly leveraged myself for my own real estate portfolio uh, since I invest in, in deals myself uh, on an individual basis. So I'm already going to have a bunch of debt. So I'll benefit from inflation in that way. And I have that risk there of the debt. So I'm going to own companies. I don't need a bunch of companies to improve my returns with huge debt. Uh, I'd rather just take something that's a little more rock solid. And so far, so good there with Equity Commonwealth. That's the reason it's a large portion of my portfolio. Um, but depends on how you want to structure it. If you have a bigger appetite for risk and you want to try to blow up your returns with highly indebted companies, then I mean, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, that, that's not that's not the style I'm going for here. I don't think that's what Samza would be. No. Himself. Yeah. Yeah, which is the reason I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I think if, if I see a like large amount to sell off again, like in terms of the properties, um, I might be wondering like what is management doing because they're very cryptic about what they have in mind. Like management is always very closed off, at least in the earnings calls and all that. I I, th- I think it's because they don't really have a particular thing in mind. I think that's just part of their culture. Is that they want to be as open-minded as possible. And if they say, we're going to acquire this, or this is what we're looking for, kind of like a SPAC often does, then uh, it's they might pigeonhole themselves into one sector that might not have a good deal there. Um, and I, th- I think, I really do think that they were looking at all sectors and maybe industrial just happened to be one that came on the radar all of a sudden because for whatever reason, I, I know Monmouth is taking other bids as well. So, and there's few opportunities right now in any sector. So uh, that anything came up, they're 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 probably looking at everything. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay, um, sounds good. So I think uh, that that covers the entire merger pretty well. Um, yeah, if anyone's got questions, they can always leave them in the comments below, and I'll include a link to Jack's channel. Uh, do check it out. He puts out a lot of great content about real estate, about uh, the equity market, about the stock market, and about a lot of macro related focus. I saw the new video, the one with the <laughs> heart in the corner. I, I, ch- I, changed, I changed that thumbnail up about corporate taxes. <laughs> yeah, uh, corporate trying taxes. To, yeah, I do, yeah. I do cover a good bit of kind of that macro stuff. It's interesting. Yeah. And I don't know how helpful, entertaining, interesting, good to know perhaps. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely real estate and, and stock investing are, are the core. Um, and I appreciate that, Karan. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jack. See you next time. See you.